I'm Dr. Uche, a practicing physician who's been coaching others to write and publish their biographies since 2013. The first autobiographies I brought to publication were for my dad and granddad, and those took more than five years and lots of mistakes. On this channel, I will show you the tools I use to perfect the process so that you can have your biography done in six months or less without the delays and mistakes. Remember to subscribe and share with your friends. Let's dig in. We're moving into a new year. Perhaps you had a busy year and you didn't get around to getting your life story written in 2024. 2025 is another year. Why don't you plan towards it? How can you start planning towards writing in 2025? What could you be doing right now? I'll tell you in this video. Here's one thing you could be doing is start reading. Read a lot, okay? Read fiction, read non-fiction, read um, even self-help. They give you ideas of problems uh, that you may have encountered and you kind of brushed off, but you can highlight in a story. What do you get from reading a lot? You learn sentence construction. You learn uh, how to captivate an audience. I, I read a lot and usually in the first few chapters, I know if I'm going to continue the book or not. So it's really important in the first few chapters to capture the attention of the reader. And one way to learn how to do this is by reading. You know which books you liked, you know what you liked about them. It could be fiction, but it could even be non-fiction like biographies. You know something about the art near the beginning that made you want to stay the course and see. So you give a little out, but you let a little bit hang in the balance. So people want to continue to see how it goes. Obviously, if you think you're not talented at this, you can hire a coach. I do coach people to write their biographies. But a lot of people need a little push. They just need a little direction and they often can figure it out on their own. And so one way to be better prepared is again by reading, reading a lot. Reading helps you with the sentence construction, syntax, grammar. It helps you with describing. Describing is so important in writing a story. You describe the setting, you describe events, I like to say how you write your history, but you got to pull in from the world. You got to pull in from what's happening. I was born in 1980. Around that time, something happened and something happened across the Atlantic. Doesn't even have to be where you lived. You could pull in something that was going on. You could say, this was around the time when something was happening in Brazil right? It may be that you didn't live in Brazil, you weren't born in Brazil, but it was something on a world scale that happened and you can use it to pull it into your story. I was born around the time when Americans landed on the moon. My father can remember watching it on TV and this was around the time my mother went into labor. Just giving you a dramatic example. I was born around the time when there was the turn of the millennium and uh, people wondered if computers were going, to, were going to crash. I was born around the time when Ronald Reagan said, Gorbachev, tear down that wall. These are some important things. Uh, in future, somebody will say I was born when Barack Obama was sworn in as the US first black president. Sort of important things in unique countries that became world events. And so learning from reading teaches you how to describe events and pull it into your story. It could even be describing the climate. I have three kids. My middle child was born in Chicago in the middle of a snowstorm. I distinctly remember being snowed in for two or three days after she was born. I didn't want to go out, of course, I just had a baby, but I was cuddled up at home with my newborn and there was, oh my goodness, uh, two, three feet of snow outside 
right? It was a big snowstorm. On the other hand, my firstborn was born in summer. And I remember just a week after he was born, strapping his little body to myself and taking a walk along Lake Michigan was right across from our apartment complex and you could cross and walk along the lake. And I remember doing that with my mom just about a week after he was born because it was summer, right? So describing the weather, pulling it into the story, it gives so much flesh to a story. And this is something you learn so well from reading fiction because it's all about describing, right? What happened, when it happened, how the weather was, uh, people you meet. I met him, he had a uh, brown shirt, he had uh, denim uh, pants, um, he had the biggest smile you'd ever seen. Um, he had a very casual way of speaking, so describing people. Um, another book that describes people so well is Nelson Mandela's Long Walk to Freedom. I love how he describes people. This person was born to a teacher and, and that sort of thing. He came from this part of the country, described so beautifully. So again, to put yourself instead for writing in 2025, if you didn't accomplish it in 2024, start to read a lot. Read fiction, read nonfiction, even read self-help because it often highlights problems and solutions. And that juggles your memory and helps you remember sort of problems you have dealt with that you can incorporate in a life story. I'll see you in my next video.